So here's another ancestral wound that can um, inhibit animistic practice. And it's sort of the loss of connection with the land. Um, sometimes when people are doing ancestral healing work, they discover that the trauma for their family began um, when they were forced to leave their native land. And sometimes that can be recent, like let's say people moving from Europe to America or people um, who were forced to, um, who were kidnapped from Africa and sold as slaves in the Americas um, or native people who were moved around. But sometimes it can mean um, something very ancient, something that is hard to track. And one of the things this does is um, it makes it hard for people to reconnect with the land because the natural um, sort of almost dialogue between their physical bodies and the environment has been disrupted in a way. And it's hard to, um, to reconnect that. I've had um, the honor to um, work with some clients who were like first or, genera first or second generation um, immigrants to the Americas and many of them have said that it, it was hard um, for their family to keep going with the um, sort of animistic earth honoring traditions once they came to the new country because people aren't doing them and it's not it's just not part of life so there can be kind of um, because you desperately want to conform and do do well in the place that you're living there can be sort of um, a loss of contact with the land um, that happens that can inhibit your earth honoring or ancestral practice. The other way that this can happen though is um, if there's trauma involved um, that you know the leaving and going to the other place wasn't voluntary or it wasn't fun or it wasn't something that you felt empowered by and so that leaves like an extra traumatic layer which can sometimes make it hard to um, reconnect with the land in a powerful way. But the third thing that can happen is just a loss of cultural understanding. When you live in a place, there are like, there's folklore about like the little people or the nature spirits or the little things that you're supposed to do um, to, um, to be on good terms with the land. Like, um, the example of putting out the bowl of milk or cream in um, the United Kingdom or porridge um, for the, um, the land spirits in Scandinavia um, or, you know, there's, you know, offerings that are done all over the world um, for the nature spirits. But when you lose that folklore, um, it becomes very complicated to how to interact with the spirits. The second problem is that the spirit's appearance is different. Um, many people have the ability to see or feel or hear the nature spirits, and they're completely different. So when they're unhappy, it's hard to tell what you're dealing with. Um, and for me, uh, recently, I had um, an experience of unhappy nature spirits coming into my home and I needed to do some actual research on um, different Native American sort of unhappy nature spirits and what that might look like, um, just so I could get an idea of who these beings might be. And I wasn't even able to find out um, about my own area because the Native people were forced to leave um, in my location and had to go someplace else. So I'm sort of slowly trying to piece together um, based on, you know, traditions in other parts of the country that I live in, um, who, who these unhappy nature spirits might be, while at the same time working with my spirit helpers to tell me, like, how to, to interact with them or, or who they might be being sent by. Um, and uh, in my case, I, I think that there's been some deforestation that's happened recently, and that's part of why it's happening as well as my own home needs to have some work so that it, the boundaries can be strong. 
So I just hope that this um, would give you a little bit of insight into um, how something as simple as losing your ancestral knowledge because you move, whether voluntarily or not, can be a type of ancestral wound that makes um, animistic practice a little more challenging.